if you could talk a little bit about the influence of the Latin American fighters and their fans for the growth of USC to get to this special moment. Yeah, you know, I, I've uh, I've always been a big fan of uh, of Mexican fighters in my boxing days, and and uh, it's always been an important market for me. I always wanted to, you know, I'll tell you a story. So we were just down, we just did a fight down in Mexico City, right? Mm -hmm. And we're driving to the arena. And on the way, we pass a playground. Swing sets, monkey bars, all, 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 all the shit you see in any playground. There was a boxing ring in the middle of the little kid playground. Mm -hmm. That's how, how much boxing is ingrained in, in, in the history and the culture in Mexico. So for me... To, to someday put on an event where we have not only top 15 fighters from Mexico, but world champions from Mexico was a big deal for me. So um, now last year we put on our first Noche UFC, which was incredibly successful and, and great. And now this uh, opportunity arose after I went to the sphere and, you know, I, I, I jumped on it immediately for us to be first the first ones to pull off a live sporting event there and during UFC Noche. So I literally went to watch you two. Halfway through it, I fell in love with this whole concept of the sphere. And I called Craig and said, I don't know what you're doing next weekend, but cancel it. You and the team are coming here. And I want you to walk through this and start planning on we're going to do an event here. We're going to be first. Awesome. Um, I, haven't, I haven't been inside the sphere yet, but I, obviously with the images that have been coming out the past uh, 11 months, um, I will hopefully be there on the 14th of September. So that will be a brand new experience as well for me. Would you describe You're gonna be blown away? You're going to be blown away. Oh, I'm pretty sure. I've seen I've seen some of those concerts. It's just unbelievable. I'm very excited about that. So, so if you take what the concerts did and multiply it by a million, that's what we're doing on on September 14th. OK, that, that's a very Dana <laughs> Dana type of comment I, I was expecting. So I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Uh, Take you two, multiply it by a million. That's what you're going to see September 14th. Craig, but I did hear that you were kind of like the brains of it, like in regards of the production value. I don't know if that's true, but how how were you like uh, involved or what was the vision when putting it together? I was the brains that was smart enough to bring an amazing team together. <laughs> That's much more talented than I am. Uh, so I did play a little bit of the GM role and assemble uh, an absolutely all-star team um, in a variety of different areas, visual effects, um, feature film, um, produ production execution. So we have uh, an unbelievable group of collaborators that have uh, came into this this whole process early on and collaborated together within the groups um, to, to come up with this concept that we're gonna execute on the 14th. So I, I also heard that uh, this will be a one a one time thing, but obviously anything can change, anything can you know develop eventually, but are you guys still considering this date to be a recurring event every year, regardless if it is in this year or not? Well, what I would love to do is, you know, if everything goes to plan mm. and the fights are great, I think we reformat this thing after the show and you could keep running this live in the sphere for a year. Um, you know, pe people could come into town. You know, they do that show postcards there. You could come mm. in and experience this this fight night for the next year um, if, if we can pull it off the way we want to and format it right. Uh, and, and if uh, the sphere is interested in that. But as far as doing another live event there, I have, I have a deal with MGM. So after this, you know, Noche UFC, we go back to T-Mobile. Okay. It, this is obviously a very complex and expensive show. Um, as you have said before, at the end of the night, when everything is said and done, you're sitting by yourselves, I don't know, drinking your champagne, whatever you want to, however you celebrate. Um yeah. What will be the measure in your mind for success? For you to say, this was a successful night for this reason, one, two, three. So in my perspective, we have all the parts and people. What we're attempting on September 14th has never been done before. And the complexity of this show is a, a level that's unexplainable to people that don't understand what we do. 
So that night, if it all runs off together seamlessly, the, we already have all the pieces. I'm blown away by this thing. I could not be happier where we are right now in the process. Now it's about executing and pulling this off seamlessly. If we do that that night, I'll be the happiest guy in the world. I don't know what his measure for success is, but that's mine. Yeah, it's it, it really is the same. You know, th there's no surprises in what the content that we've been creating. I mean, I, I was there this morning. I, I've seen it all hundreds of times. It just keeps getting better and better and the resolution gets tighter and cleaner. But I know I know what the assets look like and we believe in them. Now, now it's how do the assets transition from one to the next? How do the fights work? How does the lighting work? We haven't seen any of that, right? We, we won't see that really until Wednesday night of event week. So um, making sure that our, our audio is dialed in, making sure that all of the transitions for lighting fighter walkouts work, when the fighters are actually in the octagon fighting mm -hmm. that the environment around them isn't too bright it's and but it's not too dull it pops on camera well oh, you know making sure all the camera moves are dialed in it's all that rehearsal in the last 72 hours that we're going to have to get right if we can do that on show night that would be my level of yeah we we were successful and then after all that shit happens then the fights have to be good yeah <laughs> we expect so for sure. Hey, there have been some numbers thrown around that go past twenty million dollars that have been invested for this event. Is it true that it has gone that far? And could you give us a quick rundown on how what does was that money invested to get to that point? Yeah, so we're at twenty million now. Um, the budget was never an issue for me. This could have mm -hmm. came in at two hundred and twenty million. I didn't give a shit. We're going to go in and do this first and pull off something that nobody's ever seen before. Um, you know, it's never been done. So we, so when they originally asked him, you know, what's the budget? His, his original budget was $8 million. And that, now we're at 20. I'm not sweating the budget. I don't, I don't care about the budget, but I'll let him tell you where the money went. Yeah. I mean, it, it went to, it went to uh, our visual effects partner in blink um, that that were building all of these worlds I was describing. It went to a group called Anti Gravity that's handling all the actual film creation and all the individual filmmakers that they oversaw. Um, it went to it went to the engineering behind all of the lighting that is going to take place within the sphere. That that was a whole another task that we had to take on early early on in the process, and it wasn't easy and it wasn't inexpensive to figure out how to light our octagon without a lighting grid. So, the, 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 uh, you know, technically all of the cameras that Glenn Weiss is using uh, from the entertainment side through the entertainment truck, that that was, you know, a, a hefty, hefty number to get that dialed in. Um, all of the audio, we have original composition of music with a Grammy award-winning composer. You know, I could go, I, I literally could spend 30 minutes on, on where all of this kind of spreads out. But those are the kind of the big ticket items. When we hang up, I'll have Lene send you a list of all the people that are involved in pulling this off creatively and what's been done. But at the end of the day, for me, I want to pull off something that's never been done. I love to do that. Um, we don't cut corners. We do everything the right way. We are going to give the fans that are there live or buy it on pay-per-view one of the most unique, amazing experiences they've ever had in their life. And the fighters who participate in this event that night are going to be a part of something special. It's going to be like a sensory overload, basically. One million percent. <laughs> you, you, you nailed it. Because we talk about this all the time. The detail in, in these films, these films are only 90 seconds. So in 90 seconds, you have to suck in all these little details that are inside these worlds that he's talking about. It is phenomenal. It's unbelievable. Hey, um, so I could imagine uh, the logical situation, the logical thing will be just because it's a sphere, the octagon will be right in the middle, surrounding thing. But I wonder how many designs were you presented in regards to where the octagon was going to go like, or was it just that natural feeling that it has to be in the middle, everything around it? So I haven't seen any designs. I don't know what it's going to look like. So what was that process like? So so my head of PR, Lene, who's a spoiled little brat, she gets whatever she wants, <laughs> whenever she wants it, has been fighting with me for a week because she wants images to put out to the media. I said, 
they will get no images. They will see it the night of the event. Nobody's seeing anything till the night of the event. But but go ahead, you answer that question. Yeah, I was so, trying to get run with it. <laughs> yeah. They so um the octagon is not perfectly centered. And the reason is because uh -huh. we uh it, back in May, we did a uh test with some lighting. We also brought our octagon over, built our octagon. The the octagon we're gonna use on event night, we built it on the floor and then walk the entire building for sight lines. We, it, we, it happened to be that night that it was too close to the seats and there were some obstructions um, that we, we didn't love uh, and you weren't able to see the closest um, part of the fence uh, on the octagon. So we pushed it back several feet to get into the sweet spot. The other thing is we have some other technology that, that plays into the way we cover the fights, like our overhead camera, which has to be positioned in a certain part of the dome where one of the LED panels opens up so we can shoot a camera through that little window. And that had to be in the right spot. So there was a sweet spot that we found that was both for sight lines um, and for camera and technology and lighting, but we didn't really get it dialed in until we put the octagon on the floor. So after 31 years, I mean, if you look back to how you guys have started to what you guys are, are today at this point, how do you top this? Like, how do you move on in the future with this? So we, we always ask that question. And uh, one of the things that we've always done as far as, you notice when I do new television deals, I never let the network control our production. We always control the production. It's more expensive and uh, it, it's obviously a, a pain in the ass, but it's what we love. We love controlling our own destiny when it comes to, uh, to production and many other things. Um, every time new technology comes out in the sports world, we jump right on it. And we, 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 we if we're not first, we're definitely one of the leaders uh, in, in, in using it. And, and technology is only getting better. And I, I say this all the time. When you think about HBO, who was looked at as the gold standard in boxing, the only thing that ever changed in the 30 years that they were doing boxing was HD. They never really, you know... Um, they, they never push the limits like we do. When it I mean, why do this? Why do this fear? We, 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 we run a great business. We can do lots of things. We know what our budget is. We run our model. We, 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 have, a, we, we have a business work. I, I like to do that. I like to take things to the next level. I like to try to give the fans um, a, a better experiences w with our product. And we will always continue to do that.